Steel is at the heart of human technology, but without innovation and expertise, it wouldn't find its way into our lives the way it does. Family-owned multinational SMS Group has been working with steel for over 150 years, pushing the boundaries of its applications into digitization, cloud computing, precision manufacturing, and renewable energy. I'm Andrew Wilson, and I'm here in Davos to talk about the seemingly endless potential for one of the most important basic materials in our global civilization. Burkhardt, thanks very much indeed for joining us. First of all, give us an idea of the extent of the SMS operation. The SMS Group is a leading engineering and plant manufacturing company specialized for the metallurgical industry. We are family owned. In next year, we are celebrating our 150th anniversary. So we are a long standing company in the business. What the Germans usually call it's a hidden champion because almost outside of the industry, nobody knows us. So uh, we have a long tradition in developing new processes for the metallurgical industry. I was going to say about that recognition because everyone thinks of steel as steel manufacturing, but uh, no one thinks necessarily of what happens after that. So we are not producing steel, you are fully right. So what we are doing is we are an, a technological company. So we are developing processes, how to manufacture and produce steel, aluminum, copper and other non non-ferrous uh, materials. Uh, so our business is the development of the process, the engineering of the, of the mechanical parts, the uh, programming of the automation and software, and to bring everything together alive for the steel industry to be uh, capable of producing steel. Steel is often thought of as a, a dirty industry. That, that's probably unfair, isn't it? On the one hand, you're right. I mean, uh, first of all, if you melt alumina, this requires a lot of energy. And uh, on the other hand, uh, steel production in today's uh, world is uh, one of the busters for the CO2 climate exposure. And uh, that is something which is a real challenge. On the other hand, steel is the only material which I'm aware of which can be recycled to 100 percent one after the other. So you can have it uh, steel in your car, which has been in another car before, or it has been used in a chair, in a furniture, or in a household building. So uh, steel can be, re can be re recycled uh, several times, up to 100%. So even with the old industries, nothing stays the same. What sort of innovations is SMS looking at now? And we are looking at twofold kind of innovations. One is, of course, providing more products and new technologies to our existing customers. There is one uh, opportunity with the 3D printing. This gives a much better flexibility and uh, helps our customers in future. The second is we are also involved in the logistics and the storage of our finished products. Uh, we have a high bay storage system for coils and we have transferred this technology into a new application for a new market which is for the sea freight containers. So currently we are building in Dubai port the world's most efficient uh, high bay storage for container. This high bay storage will have a capacity of three times of the original version. Like a multi-story car park almost. It's absolutely and the, the big advantage to today's storage of one container over the other is you can have access at any point of time to any container whether it's a short one or a long container and uh, there's no limitation. And where does SMS footprint come into that? Are you all over the world consulting, building Building, running manufacturing, clients coming to you from all different parts or is there a central operation out of Germany? How does it work? I mean the origin of the company 150 years ago was uh, coming from Germany and still this, the, the center of the company's activities are in Germany, at least what the engineering and research is concerned. But out of our 14,000 staff worldwide, less than half is in Germany. The rest is distributed worldwide with hubs in Russia, in China, in India, in the United States, in Brazil and other places. So the steel producers worldwide are yeah, involved in our, or are using our equipment to a certain extent and the top 50 steel producers all have our equipment. It's a turbulent business, steel. We often hear about it in the news, about how there's problems with manufacturing companies being sold and bought by other companies. Are you affected by the turbulence of that market or are you a, a second stage and therefore in a different arena? Of course, we are directly depending on the business and profitable situation of our, of our customers because only if our customers earn money, they have money to spend on us for new equipment. So we are directly related to this development. But we see a consolidation of the steel industry happening. 
It's uh, what we see in the UK, for example. I mean, there was uh, Tata getting into it, and now some other parts are also on sale towards the Chinese. So it's a worldwide consolidation activity which is going around. And I think this is not a bad thing to go because uh, we need economies of scale. We need also the expertise to be distributed to different uh, locations. And uh, we are ready and fine with uh, following this procedure and uh, serving the individual needs of each location, whatever they need. Thinking about those different locations, I mean, with 14,000 staff around the world, how do you keep the, the company message kind of coherent and keep everyone on board with what you're doing? I mean, the different locations have different strengths and, uh, and portfolio activities. So when we are building a complete plant, then uh, we have international project teams formed. So there are Indians, Chinese, Germans, Americans forming one team to build a complete plant. So we are all focusing on the same goal. This is to satisfy the expectation of our customers. On the other hand, uh, we are deeply involved now in digitalization, in automation, so we uh, hire a lot of new specialists, young specialists, software cracks and digital natives in order to uh, comply with the future demands. I was going to say your work is not just guys with hammers banging things Not in anymore, shape. not at all. No, This is also becoming auto automized, but on the other hand, the expertise of our uh, blue color workers is very important and we have them up in the third generation working in our workshop. So final thought then, Burkhardt, sustainability is on everyone's mind, particularly for the future and particularly here in Davos. How do you see your industry evolving in the future? First of all, I see a long-standing future for the steel industry, aluminum industry, whole for the metall metallurgical industry, because as I've said earlier, you can recycle those products again and again. And from that point of view, I mean, there is no limitation on the resources. However, knowing about the pollution which the steel industry currently is producing with the CO2 emission and the energy consumption, we need to rethink about the process again. And we are currently in the process of developing a new green steel process. That means uh, instead of using fossil energy like gas or coal, to use hydrogen. So we have invested in uh, activities producing with high temperature electrolyzes hydrogen and using hydrogen for the reduction process for the production of direct reduced iron. And this then will be uh, melted in electric arc furnace, also using hydrogen and uh, the energy coming from hydrogen. So from that perspective, I see in future that the steel producers are not only energy consumers, but also energy producers. Does that make you optimistic about the future? I am absolutely optimistic and knowing about the capacity and the capability of our engineers and our research staff and the steel industry in general, we will have a good future and we will contribute to make it a better world for all of us. Burkhardt, pleasure talking to you. Thanks Thank very you so much, much indeed. Thank you.